Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about the simple scalping strategy and how you can stay stress-free as a trader trading the price action and only the price action because really that's all you need. No need of a bunch of indicators on your chart, just simple trading and that's what I've been pursuing uh, in my trading as well. I want to simplify everything um, as much as possible so I can just focus on uh, taking few setups every single day and uh, that's it. I really don't care where the market goes on a daily chart. I really don't care about fundamentals. I just want to have the skill of looking at the chart and trading the chart, taking few setups and moving on with my day. You know, a lot of people have this misconception that scalping is uh, over trading and you know, we as a scalper, you're taking a hundred plus trades every single day. And, you know, people went crazy after I was showing trading on one second chart. And yes, you can do it, but it's not necessary uh, advice to do it all the time. You want to pick the best setups because as Mark Douglas used to say, there are three levels of trading mastery, mechanical, subjective and intuitive and a lot of people have this misconception that mechanical strategy is the holy grail of trading and it's just uh, not true because if it was true then you can take every single candle and apply your mechanical entry rules and you will be able to make money and it's really not that easy any mechanical strategy if you have a trend following strategy that mechanical strategy is going to fail during the ranging environment. And the same for the ranging strategy is going to fail when we start a new trend. So that's why we need to learn how to read price first. And then we, uh, we can apply our subjective mind, our judgment to what kind of environment we are in, what kind of condition we are in right now. And based on that, we will take the trade and of course the uh, third level is intuitive where you intuitively feel that the price will do certain things because you saw it play out many many times during your back testing during your forward testing during your live trades it becomes to the point if you can focus on one system and focusing on one trade setup you can develop this intuitive feeling and you can take the trades based on your intuition so mainly in this video i'm going to be talking about how to read price so you can move on to that next level of being a subjective trader because that's where the real growth starts is when you can identify a plus setup from the b plus setup and only take the a plus setups and before we begin i want to remind you guys that my whole youtube channel this video and anything i post online is for educational purposes only this is not to be construed as financial advice and you should be consulting your own financial advisor before making any financial decisions so with that being said let's talk about the trading system and and how can you put together trading system in a simple way so number one you need to have an ability to read price so this is where all of the concepts that you learn okay all everything works like i said in my previous videos but you need to pick something pick some tool that you can read price with okay it could be ict it could be simple trend lines it could be supply and demand it could be anything and it's going to be up to you whatever you resonate with uh, whatever you can see easily it's going to be up to you but you have to follow certain rules i'm going to give you in this video and that can elevate you to the next level of that subjective thinking where you can pick and choose the setups in order not to get wrecked or not to get into the heavy losing streak. The number one thing we're going to be focusing today is ability to read price. Also, I'm going to show you very easy entry model and stress-free trade management where you can focus on reading price and trading what's in front of you, what's happening right now. Because as you might know, a lot of people trying to predict price, trying to anticipate something, trying to uh, build up all of these unrealistic expectations of what price might do instead of just trying to take a piece of the price action, 
take the trade and don't care where it goes. I, I don't really care if price is going to shoot up to the moon because I'm going to come back tomorrow and it's going to be the same price movements. It's going to be up and down, whatever. And I'm focusing on the extracting a yearly salary from the price. I want to come in every day, take a few setups and move on with my day. I don't want to predict price. I want to take advantage of what price is doing right now, right in front of me. Trade what you see, not what you think. And it's a well-known castle in the sky theory where you build up this unrealistic expectation, this unrealistic castle in the sky, but you don't really know how to get there. So hopefully this video is going to solve this for you because we're going to be focusing on the simple scalping strategy and just extracting a small amount from the market every single day. So let's keep it simple and let's remind ourselves that market moves only in two ways. It's either going to be trending or it's going to be ranging. So how do you identify a trend? Very simple. If price making high highs and high lows, that's a bullish trend. So you want to be focusing on buying higher lows in the direction of the trend. Now, since we're talking about scalping in this video, we're going to be focusing on capturing this little move in here, which is we going to identify the point of reversal. It could be a S&D responsible, you know, this could pull back lower, maybe in here, right? There could be S&D responsible in here. There could be a uh, imbalance in there be some kind of uh, point of interest where the price came back within the trend making a high low and we taking advantage of this reversal so that's scalping in the trend the same in the downtrend if the price making lower highs and lower lows it's a downtrend so we're focusing on taking trades in the direction of the trend and we're going to be focusing just scalping this little move because as scalpers, we don't really need this whole move down. This is not really our business. Let the swing traders chase this. Hold on to it. Maybe the price going to chop in here, sweep one more time or whatever. But we focusing on this little move in here. Okay? Just a little scalp and we move on to another trade. This is how you identify a trend. Pretty straightforward and simple. If price is making high highs and high lows, if price is closing about previous highs and making new highs, that's a bullish trend. If price is closing below previous lows and making new lows, that's a bearish trend. So how to identify a range? As soon as price starting to sweep the highs and going back down to the range and sweeping the lows, you can start anticipating a ranging environment. And usually the price will go out of boundaries to sweep these people out of the range, enticing new people to buy. So then it reverses back in the range. You want to stay out of the middle of the range and only focus on extremes because that's going to be the highest probability trades in the range. So we want to buy high, sell low, buy low, sell high. Do not buy high, which is do not buy breakout and do not sell the low in the range. So we never want to sell a breakout of the range because most breakouts will fail. So in a simple terms, this is what we are looking for. We are looking for the range or a trend in order for us to engage in the market. And this is where the narrative will come in because in the range, we can be looking for continuation setups. And in the trend, we can't be looking for the ranging setups. So again, a lot of people looking for the patterns without realizing what environment they are in. And a lot of people get burned up because they're trying to, you know, long, you know, there's a sweep in here. Oh, that's a juicy sweep. We, we might be, you know, sweeping this and going back up and making a new new trend because this is trending too you know and then they end up in a drawdown so it is very important to identify the environment that you in if you're in a range follow the range trading rules if you're in a trend follow the trend trading rules so if you put it all together 
this is how it looks. We have a trend, we have a range, and we have a new trend. This could be continuation range. We, we could have a trend, range, and another trend up. But you want to focus on identifying what you are in right now. So if we are trending higher, and then suddenly we can't close above the high, and we swept the high, that's a start of the range. So we now going to be looking for the range trades because we have a failure to close above. So one of the other price action rules is that double tops will run the low. That's what I learned something from uh, DTFX, from Dave Teacher's FX, is that double top will run both lows. Sometimes it runs one low, sometimes it runs both lows. So we want to anticipate that instead of trying to keep longing this range so if we fail to make a new high we anticipate this low to be broken because this low is a weak low this low failed to make a new high and then we observe if we closing below this low and we anticipate a pullback into s d responsible and continuation down and that's how the trend develops so if we put even more lipstick onto this, this becomes very obvious now. We have a channel up, which is, uh, you can notate just with a trend line, you can notate with a channel, and we have a range and trend down. And it is very important to understand that that's how price moves. Price doesn't move expansion, 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 reversal, another expansion. Price moves from expansion into the range, from the range, into expansion and most people get wrecked because they expect expansion out of the range and they expect expansion after the expansion no wonder you're going to blame everything else but yourself for losing so it is very important to understand price moves in a certain way and it's not that it was a bad price action and you lost your account it's because you don't know how to read it and you're taking setups in the environment that you shouldn't. People get excited, people want to go higher and longer and just keep longing the dips. And then what happens? We have a swing failure. We have a failure to make a new high. And suddenly this double top is responsible for making a new trend down and people are still trying to long in here trying to long in here and, and again it's a retracement they might get there long but it's only a retracement so we want to be focusing on the right areas and always staying with the trend so here's some non-negotiable trading rules that you can use in your trading and it really helped me to increase my win rate so number one treat trading as a business and focus on extracting a yearly salary. So see, a lot of people think this is like a game. You know, it's a video game. Let's take every single setup we know. We Let's take everything. Let's show everybody how can we take 100 trades per day. It's great when you practicing. It's great when you're learning, when you're backtesting. Take as many trades as you can. And, you know, you can go to the seconds charts and there's traders galore. There's a lot of trades could be found. But again, we want to focus on extracting a yearly salary. That means that we need to be consistent in our trading and not just take anything we see. We need rules and boundaries for our trading. So another rule I follow is a trend is your friend and only trade with the trend and never counter trade. So can you make money counter trading? Yes, you can make money counter trading. But in my experience, for my personality, what I resonate with, I rather take trades with the trend. So another one, buy low, sell high, never buy high, never buy low. This is the golden rule. Because if you can correctly identify between trend and range, you will always buy low and you will always sell high. And most of your losses will come when you're not obeying this rule. So why are you buying a breakout? That's buying high. If you're buying a bow, previous high, that's buying high. The same way as selling low. That's how most retail gets wrecked. They get excited on a breakout and they think that it's going to continue. So again, expecting expansion out of the range 
And that's where you trip up. That's where I, I used to trip up. And now I have a rule. Never, ever, ever buy a breakout. So it's not really about the concepts. It's about the rules, the boundaries that you set yourself. Because that's what's going to boost your win rate. That's where you're going to find all of the confidence. It's in your ability to read price. So another rule I have. Exercise patience and only take the best two to five setups per day. I might take two to five setups, right, on, on my live account or, or the prop account or whatever, and then I'm sim trading for the rest of the day. I still keep forward testing after taking my setups. And if I lost on those setups, again, I close the live account and I go and trade the same account. Another rule I have about news trading. You want to trade only after the news and do not form any biases based on the news. It's all BS, okay? Everything you see on TV, everything you see on social media, everything has agenda and you don't want to buy into that agenda. You want to exercise critical thinking. Think for yourself independent thinking and trading is all about independent trading it's all about your own development i promise you everything will fail until you start focusing on yourself and your own ability to read price as accurately as possible these are just some non-negotiable trading rules there's also price action trading rules and i compiled these rules from mentors some of the rules i've got from dave and dtfx some of the rules from somewhere else, like from L. Brooks and Mac at Price Action Trading System. I used to watch them way before ICT and now it's like all coming back together and it's like everything works and you can use it to stay away of the stupid trades. Like what I learned from uh, L. Brooks and uh, Mac is price moves in two. If price tries to make a new extreme, and fails twice, expect a reversal. Go look into your charts and see how much it's true. You know, there is also measured moves. Like if you have one leg, expect one more leg just as big. If we have an uptrend and price breaks that trend line of the uptrend, expect for price to make one more attempt to make a new extreme. So we have an uptrend, right? And price breaks an uptrend Expect for the price to try to make a new extreme before actually going down. This is how the price moves. And people get caught up in all of these complicated concepts and all of these time vortex things, whatever. I don't even know anymore what's going on. Because I'm just tr going to try to focus on the simple stuff. Because that's what matters. All I care about is predicting the next little piece of price action so i can get my piece out yeah here's what i learned something from dave first imbalance likely to make a new extreme another thing i i forgot here let me put it in this is another thing i learned from dtfx double top double bottom will run the lows or highs that created them so double top runs the lows and maybe then continuation higher or we're going lower but this pattern in itself Double top, double bottom will run the lows or highs that created them. It's like a rule when you're trading, you need to pay attention to these and then they can save you or you can take a trade based on these rules. So another rule, most range breakouts will fail. This is where most retail get wrecked. This is how they get wrecked. We have a range, tight range, back and forth. They probably inside of the range here trying to long the expansion or short the expansion and it's a range okay you you can't be doing that in a range and then once they have the little spike they they all get excited they all pile in here and then it reverses and that's a failed breakout so if most range breakouts fail you can develop a whole uh, trading model based on this where you fade every breakout and then you combine it with all of these other rules that make your model even more successful because you know what to pick and choose in your trading and it's only gonna come from backtesting okay take these rules and backtest them look in the price and see how it works see how it plays out see how it prints just because you think something 
will print in a certain way doesn't mean it's going to print in that way. Price is price and price is always right. So learn how price moves, learn how to read it and learn how to take advantage of it. And then you can scale beyond anybody's imagination. So here's a little summary. If you want to be even uh, more simple, we have trend trading and range trading. So in the trend, we can buy or sell two-legged pullback. This is another price action rule that you can implement into your system where if you're buying pullbacks in the trend, you maybe wait for the two-legged pullback because if it fails to go short twice, it's likely to reverse. Then you look for some point of interest it is s and responsible here or imbalance, something that you see in price and you're watching this pullback. You have one leg goes up and another leg and you always anticipate this first one to fail because this one is low probability and this is a high probability, especially if it's stopping into some kind of POI to the left. So as far as trend trading, you want to anticipate two legged pullback down and only after then you can look for your A plus setup that coming out of the POI. See, this two-legged pullback could be only a sweep. So first leg up, second leg down, sweep and goes higher. So this is one type of the most common uh, pullback that most easily to see is the two-legged pullback into the POI and then you keep watching price and reading price to, to see what it's doing. Then in range trading, we have uh, several rules. I already talked about never buy or sell a breakout. That's in one rule, right? You don't want to buy this. You don't want to sell this in the range. The same thing, buy or sell breakout pullback. So let's say we have a breakout and price closed the bow. Again, we're still not buying first one. See this two-legged pullback? We're buying second one and, you know, second pulls down into the range and provides us a setup back up. The same way, buy low, sell high, right? In a range, sell high, buy low, sell high. And in here, with the range rules, you will fade this breakout because if it's a range trading and we have a breakout, we're fading this breakout because we know that most breakouts will fail. But again, you need to practice. You need to backtest and practice. I'm going to give you the framework, but it's going to be up to you to implement this, to practice, to develop your own system. And like I said in the beginning, there is three components to the trading system. Your ability to read price. Number one, you can use ICT, you can use supply and demand, you can just use these price action rules, you can use anything to read price. And once you have the ability to read price, once you're confident in that, and you can pinpoint where the price likely to reverse, where the price likely to continue, then you go to your entry model and you start developing your entry model. And once you have your entry model, you want to have some kind of trade management system where you manage your trade until it's uh, stopped out or gets to profit or whatever. So also there is uh, two versions of the two-legged pullbacks. We can have the two-legged correction where it's a measured move down. What I was talking about this leg is, is kind of equal to this leg. And then we can have a higher low. Again, in this POI, there's got to be some kind of POI to the left. Again, we have one pullback, we have a second pullback. So price attempts to make a new extreme, but it's not making new extreme. So this is a swing failure, and this is, you can call it a sweep. And see, a lot of people focus on all of these concepts. They're trying to learn everything there is out there. Most of these concepts describing the same principles. It's either going to be trend or range. There is nothing else trend or range. So develop the rules around trending and ranging environment and trade accordingly. You don't need much. Again, what is the components of the trading system? Number one, ability to read price. So you just need to know any concept. You know, it could be just trend lines. It could be support resistance. It could be anything. Everything works. It's your ability to read price that doesn't work. Okay. I promise you that market is not against you. Price is price, and price always moves the same. It's either trend or range, and you need to develop that ability to read price correctly 
and uh, pinpoint the reversals, continuations. And once you have that ability to read price, you can perfect your entry model and trade management. It's that simple. But first, ability to read price. And you can keep learning about new and new uh, stuff and trying to implement into your trading system. Okay, and most of them is going to be rules when not to engage with the price so you don't get wrecked. It's going to be rules about identifying trend and identifying range. It all comes together, the ability to read price. So uh, here I have price action from Friday. Let's go through this uh, step by step and see how you could have taken advantage of Friday's price action. So here I, I know a lot of you might uh, going to lose your mind. How How is that I have an uh, exponential moving average on my chart? And it's simply you can use this to easily identify a trend. And this is a 21 uh, exponential moving average. And you can use this EMA to see rejections just like in here and uh, then also I use some trend lines and uh, again these are used to identify a trend also I marked out some uh, imbalances in here protected lows that's a swing points right this is from supply and demand swing points and uh, here's a swing point where we are retracing back into unmitigated candle so I'm trying to put all of the things I know about reading price into this one chart and then pinpoint the best scalps, right? So all of this risk to reward is a one-to-one -one scalp. So this is where I want to talk about entry model. And in my previous videos, I talked to you about how you can zoom in into the uh, five second chart. See, this is a one minute chart. You can zoom in into the five second chart and you can find uh, these reversals uh, in there. And uh, there's going to be some kind of, uh, you know, pattern where it uh, breaks out and you get on the pullback. But uh, I see a lot of people get tripped up with that. They get uh, sucked in into the price action on a five second chart. And uh, me as well, I, I used to get uh, trying to take everything on the five second chart. And again, that's why I have this uh, rule about uh, two to five quality trades per day. And uh, one minute gives you um, a lot of trades. Uh, and also, if you want to even uh, be more patient and restrict yourself, you can zoom out to like five minutes and try, try to take these types of trades on the five minute. But in order for me to avoid uh, over trading uh, on the five second chart, I am taking trades on the buy stop and sell stop entry technique. So pretty much in here, as you can see, we have breakdown and then we are pulling back into the uh, point of interest, which is the S&D responsible right and uh, also we're pulling into the EMA and we have this doji that closes inside the previous candles right and then we have a shift down so we have uh, really three confluences playing out here so we have a breakdown we have S&D responsible getting tapped in and we have a rejection from the EMA. So in order for me to take advantage of this trade, the easiest thing for me to do is to put a sell stop in here and then take one to one. So sell stop is an entry model and then you have trade management and all of my trade management is one to one. This is the simplest and easiest thing I've ever saw in trading. If you are struggling, try this out. Try backtest this and I promise you, you will find success with this if you can identify range and trend and follow the rules. You will find a lot of success with this uh, type of trading where you put sell stop and you just take one to one, which is the stop loss goes above the high and you take just one to one on the sell stop and you can see in one minute it delivers. Easy, we out. And we're not gonna try to anticipate, maybe, maybe it's gonna go back up, maybe it's gonna go back down, no. We identify a high probability point of reversal. So again, we have a breakdown, we have a pullback into the S&D responsible, and then we go down, right? So how to take advantage? Sell stop. And we trying to capture this momentum now. And we don't need much. We just need one to one and we moved on to another trade. So yeah, I get it. We missed all of this. This is where the trade management comes in. And instead of taking everything out, you can leave a partial. You can leave a partial and try to um, trail it down. Uh, you can trail it about EMA, right? You can trail it um, about these candles going down. You'd be out in here. If you trail it with EMA, you would be out in here. So that's how you could have taken advantage of this trade. So you watch this 
going down. This was a range trade in here. As you can see, we had this uh, trend line going down and we have a break of the trend line. And one of the rules says that after a trend line break, expect a new extreme. So we get a new extreme. We have the also range sweep and the nice doji in here, bullish doji. So you can put a buy stop in here and go for the safe and quick one to one that delivers in two minutes. Also, we are minding our business in the trend because we still consider to be in a downtrend. So if we are taking a counter trend trade, which is not advisable because it's not a high probability trade, but because we had this trend line break and a sweep of the range, you could consider this as a range uh, sweep. So we're buying at the bottom of the range and we're just taking one to one to the EMA or to these highs because we don't know if the trend is going to continue or we're going to reverse at the highs because this is a ranging environment in here. And just like I was saying, we have trend that goes into the range and then goes another trend. So while the retail expects, you know, expansion, 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 we expect expansion range and the new expansion or down or the new expansion up out of that range. And in here, this is a bigger swing point, right? This high made a new low and now we have a swing failure. We couldn't make a new low. So double bottom runs the highs. So we have confluences stacked for this trade to play out. We see this trade play out and we're actually starting to see a closure about EMA, closure about these highs. We have this range now. So what is this? It's a range breakout and pullback. So we're not buying the breakout. We're waiting for the pullback and the price is holding about EMA. So this in here is a pullback into the imbalance and another rule Imbal first imbalance makes a new high. So you can anticipate this to be a good trade because we are in the bullish trend after the breakout, pullback into the imbalance. We know that first imbalance likely to make a new high. So we're looking for the reasons to get in. Now, there is not a good reason here to get in. You can place a buy stop about this black candle, about this down candle, right? or you can place a buy stop about the bullish inside candle, which will reduce your risk if you don't want to take this whole candle. Of course, the best setup would be to sweep this candle and then go back up. But uh, as you can see, that, that's what you're going to see in the back testing. Sometimes it doesn't sweep. Not every imbalance like this is going to hold. Uh, it's likely to hold after the breakout in direction of the trend that's where it's likely to hold so you have another one in here we have this imbalance if if you don't trust them just skip them and just know that it is likely to put a new high so if if you see imbalance uh and you don't want to trade it just wait out and wait until it makes a new high before shorting if you want to short and that's just another rules that I use in my trading. First imbalance makes a new high. So we, we start to make the swings, as you can see, right? We're closing above. So this is a clear bullish trend. So we want to take advantage of pullback. So there's another pullback into an imbalance, right? You can uh, place a buy stop about this green candle because this down candle is very big, right? Or you can place a buy stop about the down candle, but then you have to wait all of this to play out. The safer would be, uh, if you wanna engage in this trade, would be uh, this, and trying to get on this momentum upwards, and it's a easy one-to-one -one there. Then uh, we have uh, this swing point established, we closed about it here, and we pull back, and uh, in here we got into the ranging environment, and again, we don't want to really short down into EMA and if we do it's only going to be down to EMA right or to the protected low so because we are in a trending environment if we get into the range we want to take uh, setups in the direction of the trend so 
as you can see here, a lot of people got tripped up if they were thinking this is a start of the range. But if you wait it for the pullback to the EMA, we're still in this range. We're still in this swing point in here because uh, we closed about this high here. So this is a new swing point in here and protected low moved closer to here. So as you can see, we swept the top of the range, break down and never broke this low. And we have engulfing candle up. As you can see, this green candle first opens up lower and then shoots up higher. So what you can do, if you anticipate this, because we pulled back to the EMA, because we are at the bottom of the range here, you can anticipate this move by placing a buy stop order here. And if price gets momentum, especially this is the best setup really. The engulfing candle is my favorite setups. They usually work out very quick and um, with high probability because we are opening out down, sweeping the slow and immediately shoot up higher. And while everybody's waiting on a retracement, we already in the trade and we already out. In the trade, already out, scalped, and moved on. So we have this swing point established now, right? It would be nice if the price moved like that and, you know, we broke here and we anticipate lower, but it's not that. After the trend, we anticipate a range. So as you can see here, we had the trend up, right? We broke the trend here. We broke the trend. We pulled back into this swing point right and this is like a big range and it makes another leg up which is this is like two measured legs up one leg pull back second leg and what it did this range here it was a false breakout and it shifted lower that's why we don't want to buy a breakout we want to buy a breakout pullback that never happened because we one leg down second leg down here and we broke this range. This is where the trend reversal occurred. And you can see we, we have the trend, we broke the trend, and one more attempt to make a new extreme. We made a new extreme and we collapsed. What happened in here after breaking trend? We swept the slow, which is a first step. If you follow me on X, on Twitter, I post this daily where I say this is a first stop in here. The first stop is a scalp. So this is a range in here. This is a swing point. And we have a first stop here, first stop of the range that makes a new high. And the pullback sweeps the first stop, makes a double bottom and continuation higher. This is a pattern that plays out over and over and over again in the markets. That's the other type of rules you can follow and anticipate. That's why I like the one-to-one -one scalping because we don't really know if this is a first stop or not until it goes down, sweeps it and makes a double bottom. We don't really know this is a, the first stop, but we can anticipate it. And that's why we want to take profit instead of waiting for this and being in the drawdown and then hoping that it's going to go back up. You want to anticipate it. That's why scalping is going to be best i don't know it works for me i love it i love the scalping way more than uh trying to you know get in here wait all of this and then hopefully get out here or even worse get to break even so i rather watch what price doing and then take advantage of this small pieces seen here after this trend line right we had double legged pullback so two legs down swept the slow here you see the swept the slow and immediately shoot up higher so see in here this is a zone in here this candle right this whole candle is a range and it's a zone on a lower time frame what happened here we broke this trend line with this momentum and we tried to make one more extreme to the downside we couldn't make that extreme it breaks out and goes higher. You can try to get in on a buy stop of this candle and this bullish candle and um, anticipate that this is a higher low. This is a that double bottom that runs the highs 
and we also have a range sweep. So you stack in these confluences, these simple confluences, in order for you to take this one scalp, this high probability scalp. And you know, if you don't like how it looks, just skip it. Skip it because there's going to be another trade. You don't like how it looks, you skip. Maybe you don't want to take this trade because it's below the EMA. It's understandable. So again, we take this trade, right? We ignore the EMA, which is that's why maybe this is not a uh, high probability setup as far as uh, EMA goes, but we, we keep stacking those confluences, right? So you have range sweep, you have trend line break and trying to make a new low couldn't make a new low so look at this it's it starts making bullish candles and you can get in on the buy stop of this bullish candle and it goes higher there it is again that first tap we got into the zone about right that first tap and the second tap which is usually a double top we trade higher into the unmitigated candle this candle was never tested right it left unmitigated there is a gap there is a little imbalance in there so it never been tested so if we're rejecting from this area that's a good area for the scalp at least for me so again we, we're going about 50 percent remember from my previous videos i was saying like you want to take a trade off of unmitigated zone above 50 percent if it's a short so there you go we got into the zone we're rejecting from this unmitigated uh, candle and we also printing engulfing candle again one of my favorite setups as far as these um, buy stop sell stop scalping you could put a sell stop order here and it gets triggered after this candle goes up and goes down immediately that's enough for me to say there is a rejection this is a short momentum and we take this one to one from here to here easy one to one very quick in in two minutes you are out again we lined up the confluences we had the first stop the first stop got liquidated on this move up we rejecting from the unmitigated uh, zone about 50 percent of the swing and we have engulfing candle and we take our one to one again if if you want to play with partials you can take a partial here and leave a runner here and try to capture this move down but in my experience the easiest and the least stress-free is just to take one to one and move on and focus on your win rate focus on avoiding worse trades and only taking the best setups because that's how you're going to increase your win rate and with one to one you only need a win rate of 50 percent and above and you will be profitable so the more you learn how to read price the higher win rate is going to be and i promise you it's not in the concepts i promise you it's not uh, the holy grail pd array you don't need quantum physics to read this market there are simple rules and principles that you can follow and take advantage of these little scalps every single day and this is our edge as a scalper we don't need the whole move up we don't need to be right on multiple swings we don't need to do that all we need is little one-to-ones and you adjust your risk according to the candle if you want to just risk 100 bucks you adjust the risk to the scandal you go to micros or if you need to but you take the same trade it's your one kick the same kick every time boom one-to-one 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 and you train yourself to take these one-to-ones and it's the least stressful trading i will guarantee you that it's the least stressful trading you will ever do you don't get wrapped up in all of these expectations all you're expecting is one-to-one -one. and of course the, there are going to be trades that fail of course there are going to be trades that fail like in here we have this trend line right we have a break of the trend line we have a new extreme so in here buy stop here and it fails that's fine too you can also learn maybe manage and avoid this where you have entry and it moves up a little bit you immediately place your stop to break even right and you anticipate the momentum up and if you don't have a momentum up you get stopped out at break even but that's another element to your trade management that will make it more stressful that will make it harder for you to manage your trades the easiest way is to set a stop loss set a target and wait 
Just do not touch the trade. That's the easiest, stress-free, and uh, all you have to focus on is reading the price correctly and getting in, in in the best spots possible. So this trade failed, you know, it swept here and it failed. And if you were not greedy, you maybe got out here or moved to break even and protected yourself. But it's going to be up to you. You know, you need to backtest this. You need to find out what's resonating with you, how you like to trade. You know, there are guys that are just taking one point scalps, you know, one point scalp, one point scalp, one point, and they add up over time. Let's go back to this price action piece over here. And um, I explained that this engulfing candle provided a good trade here. And uh, as you can see, we went back down. So what is this in here? This in here is a range. This is a breakout of the range. And uh, this is a pullback into the range. So by the tr range trending rules, we anticipate breakout, pullback, continuation. So we didn't really have a pullback. This is the first leg down. We want at least two legs, right? But second leg broke the range. So this swing point in here, right? This low made a new high, so this is a swing point. This swing point got broken here, and we anticipate what? Pull back, back into the range, and it pulled back into the unmitigated S&D responsible. This is the structure responsible for breaking the lows. Pulled back with this big green candle, right? But we don't want to take trades against the trend. The trend shifting bearish. We broke the and closed below EMA. We way below EMA, right? This trade, if you want to counter trade, which I'm not really advising you to do so, because this uh, counter trading is more advanced. But if you want to counter trade this, you can by placing a buy stop order on this. And this is an engulfing candle. Uh, we trade lower and we immediately shoot up. So you could have had this trade. Right, you place a buy stop here, anticipation back to EMA, back into the range, back to this unmitigated SND. That's trade in itself. But if you want to follow the rules, we wait for the trend. So again, we anticipate a double pullback up, double legged pullback. So this is the first leg. And this is the second leg. So as I was saying, there are two types of two legged pullbacks. We have this type and we have a lower high type. So this is a lower high in here with engulfing candle. So this candle went up and immediately shoots lower. And I think it, uh, it should lower be below this candle too. So you get triggered on this sell stop and you get out for one to one. Then we have another leg up into this swing point. It's internal structure in here, leg up. And we have should lower with displacement, right? This is a displacement with imbalance. So the first imbalance makes a new low. So we can anticipate this, especially with the engulfing candle. This candle went up and immediately shoots lower. These engulfing candles are my favorite setups, as I said, because they usually play out, especially in the direction of the trend. Or we have ranging, right? still in the direction of the trend plays out so even with these types of trades you can filter down to the best of the best setups so uh, i would argue this is one of the best setup the engulfing candle in direction of the trend not breaking protected lows still pulling back to the ema still holding structure still in the trend another good setup is here after trading into the higher time frame poi which has happened way before right and all the way here to the left, this left unmitigated. It's a high probability area of reversal, right? We're keeping that in mind. We're watching the price trade into this and we're watching this engulfing candle. Now you got to catch these. You put the uh, sell stop right here and you watch your trade go right into the profit immediately. This was another great setup. And most of these are engulfing candles. This is a good setup too engulfing candle rejection off of the EMA and you don't have to use EMA you know it could be a great addition it's it just easily to spot a trend if you start seeing the candles overlapping on the EMA that's a range all right if EMA is going flat that's a range the whole point of this video is following rules 
and not taking the every setup that you see. It's all about following the rules because the rules will get you to that next level of subjective trading. That's where the work begins because purely mechanical trading, while it could work, it could be very stressful too. If you have a 30% win rate uh, on the mechanical strategy, imagine how, how stressful it's going to be when you have uh, you know seven losing streak drawdown. You know your confidence is not going to be there, especially you know with thirty percent win rate or whatever. You need to take one to three risk to reward setups. You need to take more than one to one setups. So I rather learn how to read price correctly and then increase my win rate based on subjective thinking. Taking every candle, taking every setup uh, with mechanical rules is not going to work, okay? Been there, done that, not going to work. So that's why the subjective trading is what uh, really put me on the next level. And the more I learned about price action, the more rules I develop uh, when not to. And that's what most ignore. They do not set the rules to when not to engage with price. When it doesn't look really good. You know, when it doesn't uh, look high probability, that's why you can try to filter out some bad trades, which ultimately will uh, lead you to having a higher win rate and lead you to have a nice equity curve, especially with these one-to-one -one setups. So with that being said, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this uh, video answered some pressing questions uh, about uh, trade management and about trading rules, uh, what not to do. Make sure you follow me here on YouTube. I also post some charts on uh, Twitter or X at uh, StoicTA. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Stay safe.